before I get started is, does everyone have a pen with them? If not, I have some. Could you just put your name and an email, like a contact for me, um, just collecting them. And what I'd like to do is, on the card, just write a question. Any question before we even get started, before I explain, you know, you probably know the title and got a little bit of the outline of this, this course. But I just want to know if there's one uh, question that in case we don't get to it or I don't get the answer, that I will respond to you. So what do you hope to get out of this and if you have any questions, okay? That's all I really need. Your name. Not yeah, you <laughs> your last one. This is why Rocky should be available to the commercial public. <laughs> you need a pen? Okay. Who needs a pen? Very That's okay. I brought you here. <laughs> I need to be a Girl Scout. I'm always prepared. I just kicked that out of me. Those are the Boy Scouts that were supposed to be prepared. Yeah. That's what I said, Boy Scouts only model. So we're patrols of lifestyle. They're only prepared for the Girl Scouts. Help them. <laughs> okay, while you're writing, what I'm going to do is, once again, my name is Suzanne, and I like everyone to call me Suze. I'm pretty. I'm all about the three-syllable word, especially in media nowadays. Three-syllable. Has anyone ever heard of the three-syllable word in media? No. Never heard of that. Like Jen or Ken. It's it's just when you start doing media and talking and on air and all kinds of things, they're real big about the three-syllable word. It seems like it helps you better. It's easier to remember. Three letter syllable for media. My background is a media and a styling and media consultant. So what does that mean per se? Well, I have a humongous fashion background, and I started many, many years ago because I used to teach. I used to teach fashion, I used to teach design, I used to teach fashion shows, the whole nine yards. Um, I got involved with local media. So everyone, is everyone here from Pittsburgh? You don't need a couple of months from Pittsburgh. Okay, local media uh, stations. I dressed the anchors for like about five or six years, so I helped a lot of KDKA. Um, Channel 4, from then I went to um, a talk show, I was behind the scenes with the talk show, meaning that I helped a lot of our guests on air. So I have a major background with styling and on air and media. Uh, some of my clients, my most recent client is, does everyone watch MSNBC? Is that big? Okay, you've ever heard of the, course, um, the show Mad Money? It runs every day, it's the, the four guys and the girl. Well, Karen Fireman is one of my clients. I have written to her, she has my recent book and so forth. So she's one of the people that kind of streamlined because she's a finance person. And now all of a sudden she has the show, so she's in media. So a lot of times the clients like that I help adjust to get to that level in front of media. Because nowadays, from what I've been seeing, and I know you guys are array of different here, you know, some of you do media, some of you do video conferencing, whatever it is that brought you here today is a lot of us are looking to either, number one, maybe make our own videos, or we have clients that we're filming now on video, we're doing our own video, we're putting them on the website, we're doing podcasts, we're doing all kinds of stuff. So it kind of helps you if you know a little bit of what works for you on camera and what doesn't work for you on camera, okay? So, and a lot of times people are just unsure. You know, they want to look their best and they're just not sure of what's going to work for me and what isn't. So that's what I'm here today. We're going to talk a little bit about that and vlogging and also about speech and what have you. I recently came out with a book this past summer, and I wrote a whole chapter on working for the media, dressing for the media, styling for the media, and all kinds of stuff with video conferencing. So that is my most recent accomplishment. And actually, I've gotten to the point with that because probably just about three or four years ago when I started doing, I used to do a lot of blogging and that for TV shows. And I used to write a lot of fashion and styling for my friends. I still do with the newspaper and fashion and columns and so forth, have you. Well, I got recognized through that from having my blog, from having my videos, from everything on YouTube and what have you. And I actually got a chance to be published through a publisher from California who had noticed me through that format and got a chance to be published, wrote a chapter of the whole thing this past summer. So that's really great. There's so many opportunities that you could do with social media and what have you down the line. So that's just something here to tell you. It does work. And trust me, probably like many moons ago, I was the old school that, and I still deal with people in old school. I mean, I still deal with the local people in the city of Pittsburgh that are so, like you talk about 
uh, Twitter and in all that kind of stuff in the videos, they're still, you know, they don't want to get to that next step. They're still kind of like holding back. So you still are challenged with a lot of that, but a lot of times it comes from within yourself and you have to take that extra initiative to get to the best way. That's why I sort of did it for myself. So with enough said, are you guys going to do the little cards? Won't you pass them on? Okay, what am I going to talk about first? What about color? Why do you think color is so powerful? If you see something on video or on media or on TV or whatever, why do you think color is a powerful tool? Um, there's um, connotations of emotion. And, um, there's all kinds of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Color is something that when you are filming yourself on video or you're doing a podcast or you maybe got called because your company is getting a lot of recognition and you have to jump on TV and do a little six, three second, eight minute you know, piece about your company or what have you, you're like, oh my God, what am I going to wear? What's color? Color can be a very powerful tool. And what that means is when you are doing that, even when you're speaking, okay, in day-to-day -day life, you want the person to see you, okay? You don't want a, the biggest thing, the worst thing to do on video and on air is, all right, this is my per se of no wire hangers, no white shirts. Why do you think white shirts do not work on camera or on video or on podcasting? They wash out. They wash out. If I take a piece of white paper, okay? And I put it right directly next to my face. What do you see first? The white paper. The white paper. Okay, that's a perfect example of color. So you want everyone to see you. You want people to hear what you are saying. You don't want them working, looking at that full white shirt or a, a you know, stock black. Sometimes the color extremes are the worst. And white on camera is really bad. I noticed um, Vivo, who's one of the sponsors today, they're video conferencing. And they work with a lot of clients and a lot of companies like UPMC. And a lot of the CEOs and people that have to come on video, the guys will show up with a white a shirt. And it's, it's the downfall because the camera and also the lenses will bounce off the light. They pick up everything. They're very sensitive and it washes them out. So a lot of times people just aren't familiar. They just don't know what to wear. So they don't feel you know comfortable, and they always obviously wear the wrong thing. So white is the worst. The other extreme is black. Black can be very draining and hard on you when you're on camera or on video. It has a tendency to drain you. Think of like puppeteers. Why do they wear black? Because they don't want to be recognized. They're hiding, right? If everyone says, "Oh, well, black looks good on camera because it slenderizes you," and white does the opposite. It expands on camera. But think about it, a lot of times on black, like we deal with media and people on air, it also has a tendency to drain you in your face and in your features. So it can darken you, it can make you look older, it can just not enhance you. It's really the worst colors. So always think white and black are the two worst. Now, another thing you'll see a lot of is red. And you see this a lot in people in politics, especially the president. Why do they always have a president wearing a red tie? Power color. It's a power color. But red also is a very powerful color. If you show up in all red, what are you going to see? You're going to see red. Here I am, red. So it's a very hard color to carry off. So the best thing to think about, the best clothes or whatever you're doing for camera and on air, for videotaping, for podcasting, is keeping it simple because, again, you want your audience to hear you. You want them to listen to your message. You want them to see you. You don't want them to see your outfit first before you get on camera. The best is to stay within the color spectrum, okay, the prism. So what I like to do is I always bring in forms that kind of give a feeling of visual aids, and I have to thank Nordstrom's for their fabulous forms because <laughs> they're really hard to come by. But the, the what I did is I did a basic thing. Your jewel tones and blues and grays, okay, those are phenomenal for everybody. They always work on good skin color. They always work on good skin tones. So think of grays. For men, it's always grays. If you could do a gray shirt or navy, you know, stay within those extremes. Stay away from ties that are 
glary or shiny. It's tied to have a lot of detail. Now we're into high def. Okay, so you really have to worry a lot about the high def camera. You don't want to do things that have little patterns on it. What happens with high def, and even if you're working with high def on video, which maybe some of you are, the camera is so sensitive that if you have a pattern that's really small, like a polka dot or a stripe, it literally, you can be standing still. And what happens is that camera looks like it's moving because the camera's so sensitive it picks up on all those little patterns and tidies that it actually looks like it's moving. So the next time, a good exercise for this is the next time you're on TV and if you're looking at it through a high definition channel or channel station and you see it, look and see what that person's wearing on TV. Maybe if it's a guy or whatever. See if they have like a small little pattern or something jacking on their tie. And you'll notice if you really concentrate, it actually is, it'll look like it's moving. So patterns like that are like a big no-no. Anything that has shine to it, sheen. A lot of women, we can't do a lot of jewelry or chrome. Things that are shiny around your neck, you have to watch. Because again, the concentration will be on that item and not on what you were saying. And you always want your audience to know what you're saying. I mean, your audience is your power. You want to be coming back. You want your audience to be listening to you. You want them to be responding to you. You want them to join in with you. So keep that all in mind. Your jewel tones are the best that you can keep. Another thing is keeping if you can match. Like what I did is I did a simple, uh, simple jewel tone with purple that's a shirt and matches with a sweater. Okay, so that's what I mean by matching. Like if you stay within the same color family. That also is very, you know, it makes it very keep it classic. It makes it simple. It's not overpowering. Think of accessories. You don't have to be over accessorized too. When I show up a lot of times on sets, when we're doing commercial sets or whatever we're doing, I might have a necklace or two. Sometimes it makes all the difference in the world, but again, you don't want to be overly done. You don't want to have a zillion earrings in your ears or tons of clanging noises. You have to watch your camera. You have to watch your microphones. Everything, it, it picks up. It's very sensitive. So if you happen to have bangles, say you're being videotaped, you're talking on camera, and you have bracelets, and they'll be banging, they'll be irritating. Your audience will be picking up that sound, but won't be listening to what you are saying. So keep all that in mind. Which which color color palette are you using? Are you using the paint palette or the AB palette? Um, pertaining to just an overall general. When you're generally talking here, are you talking about the the the, the paint palette. Well, I would and, say. Or are you talking about the AV palette because they're they're slightly right. Different. Right. If you're gonna when you talk about the pink palettes, you're talking about like pinks. No paint. Paint. Oh, paint. paint. The paint, paint palette. Oh, yeah, I'm the Pantone, sorry. The Pantone colors or the camera colors. Camera colors. Like, because they're they're slightly different. right. They're, your primaries are different. Right. Totally different. Totally different. I'm sorry, I just said paint. <laughs> no, he's talking about the painting. The painting colors are pink. Now, I'm just talking about like color, you know, color foods in general. I usually don't go through the Pantone colors for painting. Um, I'm usually just basic colors. Well, you know, I mean, you're, when you're talking about, you're, you're saying jewel tones and it, right. they're slightly different. If I was doing um, an illustration and said jewel tones, I'd be looking at a different color set than if I was doing light work and camera. I, I, that's what I'm asking. Right, right. You would be looking at different sets. Yeah, that's that's what I'm asking. Is which ones are you talking? Are you talking more about looking at through the camera first? I'm talking more about looking at through the camera first. Okay. And, and which ones work the best that way? And a lot of times they are the more deeper, richer tones. So when I say jewel tones and I say like purples, I'm talking about the richer jewel. You know, like more depth tones, so that they look much more better on camera and they come across a lot more better on camera. The vivid tones are like bright pinks and greens are okay but you got to watch your emerald greens. You know the real like the shiny Christmas green. You got to watch your greens. You got to watch your greens if they're doing green screen too. Yeah absolutely and of course that has a lot to do with it. Your screen, your backdrop because if you go show up at KDK which is the local station they're all their backdrops are blue. So again, you got to watch. So you might want to watch your, your tones there. You might want to consider grays, or you might want to consider the purples or the rich tones, which a lot of them are wearing now for high depth. You'll notice it makes all the difference in the world. 
Okay, any other questions about the color before we move on? No? What about like a chocolate brown for a factor? The previous shoe product. Okay, so if you have a dark brown background, mm -hmm. like a backdrop. Yes. I still think, depending on, uh, are you doing like a, mm -hmm. you're just doing waist up. I still think your, your um, the purples again, the grays would work, blues. Blues are always a safe color. Like the gentleman back there, his blue shirt, that is a great <laughs> color. Those are always the safe colors. So that would come across really good with a brown backdrop. Uh, this is Van Houten. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess you're doing the weather. Yeah, unless you're doing the what now again for KDKA, if he had it, he would be. Now, what happens with that? Now, what happens if I show up? He, we're doing a video set, your clients are there, you have a brown backdrop, and your client comes in, and he's in a, and she's or he is in a brown suit. You're going to get lost, right? So, a lot of times, you know, that people just don't know. And you have to do your homework. If you have people that are like you, for instance, maybe it's your company, and you're doing the videotaping. You have to take the initiative and say, okay, my clients, this is it. One, two, three, four. You know, this is the backdrop we're using. These are the colors I want you to stay away from. Maybe you're shooting in a in an office. Like we, when we, when you do want on location shots for TV or on location shots for interview, you never know what's going to happen. You always have to be ready with pretty different. One time we shot at Seton Hill College, and the college is all. If you ever been to Seton Hill, it's dark and wood and rich. So, of course, the, um, the founder and director of Seton Hall, she shows up and what is she wearing? A dark brown or a bee suit, which is like the worst thing because she's just going to get lost in the whole shoot. So, sometimes it happens. That's why there's so many things, homework, so to speak, you know, that you have to go in. So, think of that as your outline. Think of your backdrop. Think, uh, do your homework, know where the setting is when you're doing the shoot. You know, know where you're going to be. Are you going to be outside? Are you going to be inside? Are you going to be using the color backdrop? Think about all those things and then go to the next step. If you're, video, if you're shooting yourself, you know, be prepared. What would be the best for me to use with this backdrop or vice versa if it's your client? Um, another thing I wanted to talk about is for women and men especially, if you know you're going to be doing something on camera, a lot of um, the courses that I sat in today, you know, they're about podcasting, they're about shooting your own videos, there's all kinds of stuff going on. And I think some of you are, you know, thinking about doing that or done it in the past. Maybe do something that what you think you're going to wear or do something on air, shoot yourself in it, take a photo of it, so to speak, or if you can have a friend do a video of it, and then play it back. Use that as a learning tool. Because that's really your best critic, you know, yourself. You know what's going to look best for you on camera. You know what you're going to feel comfortable with. Never show up for something and wear something new, which you're not sure about. Maybe something that's too tight or something that you're not going to move in. Because what's going to happen again? You're going to be so worried about your appearance that you're going to lose the part of what you're saying or what you're trying to get across. And your audience is going to sense that. So keep those kind of things in the background, in, in the back of your head with that. That's kind of like an outline of all that. Any other questions about color or video or anything like that? Shoot. Okay, another thing I wanted to address is speech, talking. Um, when I originally got booked for this, you know, my background was only media and styling and dressing. But they wanted me to say, be prepared to let your message shine through, not only on styling, but also on talking. So let's just talk a little bit about there. When you are ready to talk or speak, there's three things you really should get into mind. There's your beginning, your body, and your end. What two things do you think are the most important? Beginning and your end. The beginning and your end, basically. And why do you think flesh? Well, and why do you think that is? Well, your beginning is when you're connecting. Okay, you're you're originally you're introducing yourself, you're connecting yourself with the audience. So that is when you're engaging it. And your ending obviously is your follow-up. Your body is the body of it, but your ending is what's gonna make it either go out on a high note, either you know, say something memorable, either take everything you talked about. And you know, kind of 
outline it or make it in a summary and then let everyone maybe leave them with something or one piece of advice that's going to stick in their head. So think about all that when you're doing your video or your talk or whatever you're going to be talking about on video. Another thing too is your diction and your pronunciation. Okay, those are biggies. Another thing you have to watch, and depending on if you're doing podcasts, if you're doing video conferencing, is you're talking to the person. You might have did a lot of research to get this person. Maybe it's somebody that's limited on time or limited, you know, you finally did it. You're like, oh my God, I'm having this person. I'm going to get a chance to talk to them. Know how to pronounce their name correctly. You know, it's little things like that that sometimes throw you off. Just try, you know, and sometimes you're doing so many things you're not remembering. But it, it helps, you know, make sure you know how to pronounce their name correctly. Make sure you know a little bit about if there's a little quirky thing about them that maybe you can throw out them that you're doing your research for. Because that, a lot of times, it just, it, it kind of comes back to you and you have to really watch with the pronunciation. I see that over and over and over again and, it, and it's like a big thing with, with a lot of people. So that's a big plus. Your diction, how you're speaking, okay? A lot of times it's just practicing in front of the mirror. You know, listen to your voice. How many of you love your voice? How many of you hate your voice? Does anyone have that? Like you like, oh, I hate my voice nasally or I love them. Listen to yourself in a tape recorder and play it back. So listen to how other people are going to hear you because that is a big plus, especially, again, when you're doing podcasting, when you're doing video conferencing, things like that. Because I think in this day in society, you know, everybody's out there doing it, and depending on where you want to go with it. I mean, maybe you're just doing it as a hobby, maybe you're doing it for fun, but maybe you're doing it because you want to get somewhere, and you're trying to job searching, there's a lot of venues out there that you can take with it. So you want to kind of make yourself a little bit ahead of maybe the next guy. So taking other ways of, you know, figuring out how to do that, what's going to get you ahead of somebody. You know, you go on YouTube, you see 6,000 videos. Some of them are crazy, some of them aren't so much, some of them are lasting, some of them, you know, make something good, something you might get to the next level, somebody might get recognized with you on that, and then you get the opportunity to the next level, but you blow it because you're like, okay, you're not together, you're not knowing what to do, you're not pronouncing, you know, stuff like that. So you, it's always good to help make yourself look a little better, or make you try and look your best. And I know in this day, maybe video, a lot of it is, maybe a lot of us work at home, and we just get a little bit in, comfortable within our own little setting, and that we go out or we meet clients, and we're not kind of prepared to take it to that next level. But I'm a real big believer that if you really are, you know, take pride in yourself, be, know that what you have to say is important and other people do want to listen to you. You know, and you are making your video, you are talking to whatever you're doing, you're doing it to get yourself out there because you want to hear yourself heard. So, you know, take it to the next level where you're going to be great all over. You know, know, know kind of the outlines of what you're doing, whether it's Clothing, with the wording, what have you. Okay, any questions from anybody on anything? I got a follow okay. up on that. I'm, okay. I'm a professional entertainer. Okay, cool. What do you do for a living? Um, I eat fire. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> okay. I also do storytelling, close okay. friends. I'm a variety, okay. variety of artists. Okay. But one thing that I've learned over the years is you never know who you're talking to. Right. Always have your image right because you never know who you're talking to. It may be the CEO of a Fortune 100 company. It may be a guy who digs in a ditch, but it also may be your next paycheck. That's right. Absolutely. That's a given example because you just don't never know. And I think just because it's so much, it's just you know, our society is evolving with everything. And this whole two day session is about a lot of people are taping or podcasting. You know, I sat in yesterday on the two shows. The wrestling and the other Pittsburgh guys. And I mean, I think that's all great. I think it's fabulous. But, you know, I just feel like if you're going to do that, why can't you, if you really want to take it to the next level, you know, I don't know if they're just doing it for fun and hobby. It's cool and dandy. But maybe they might, it might be nice to get advertisers or somebody to come on you so they can make a living out of it. So, you know, clean it up a little bit. You know, maybe make yourself look a little bit more presentable on the video or what have you. 
Um, my partner and I actually were asked to do a podcast by a local publishing company. So okay. the whole like how to infrastructure stuff is all taken care of and now we're all about content and everything. Okay. And they want to, it's, it's a lesbian focused show and they keep saying, well dress like lesbians. And I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> okay, let's back up. Dressed like lesbians. That, that's a, now, what do you think, uh, if you would close your eyes and say, okay, what do you think a lesbian's going to Well, I know what these gay men running the show think that Okay. Is. Well, that's what I mean. <laughs> Are the people running the show lesbians? No. Okay. Well, now they are because I said, okay, we're going to just dress like we dress, like the person we want to see talking to us, and, right. and that's, and we can adjust that. But they want us to go for a casual, a little bit more casual dress. Okay. So I'm kind of curious, this was my question actually, what kinds of things would you recommend for someone who does want to, to polish it a little bit, but okay. is still dressing, um, you know, we're not going to wear suits. We right. don't do that in our Right. Time. I understand. We're going to wear games. Right. Okay. Yeah, well, let's back up a little bit. Are you guys going to be sitting or sitting? Can you tell me a little bit about the background? Like, where are you going to be doing it? We have green screen. We okay. Have, we have, uh, right now we sit at a round table. Okay. And we're eventually moving to a couch setting. But for now, we just have a round table. So it's just our, you know, torso. So you're, and you're shooting this off right, right now. Okay. So you're not seeing legs. You're not seeing feet or whatever. No. Okay. If we are, it's because the candle fell over. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, that's a lot. It happens. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. The biggest thing with, if you're doing mm -hmm. on, here's a big thing with, I'll get to your point, but couches. Mm -hmm. Couches are okay, but here's what happens to a couch. If you are doing a show, you're going to take a couch. People have a tendency to want to slouch on a couch. The biggest thing you want to do is, you know, you want, when you're talking, I know it sounds, you know, you're not normal, but when you know you're being videotaped or you want to try to look your best on camera, you want to sit up straight. You want to be erect, okay? You don't want to be like this. So, and that, uh, something that could happen, if you do a couch, which is fine, throw a bunch of pillows behind it. So nobody would really slouch on it. It would still keep them erect. And then it just comes across better. Your whole frame when you're shooting, everyone will look really good. Yeah, I prefer the table. Yeah, well, the table's good. That's your safe zone. That's why the table. And if you're like me, you have a tendency to talk with your hands. I have to really watch when I do a lot of TV yeah. because I get easily like, hello. You just kind of like, you'd like to delay on something. So that helps. Okay. Um, I think solid, keeping it solid is very nice. I'm not saying go out and, you know, buy a suit, buy whatever, but a nice solid long sleeve. Here's another thing for people. Long sleeves. Short sleeves are, again, distracting because sometimes your skin could be, you know, if it's fair, it comes across like the white paper. So you want to, you, when we tune in, we want to hear what you're saying. We want to concentrate on you. We want to hear your content. We want to listen to you. We want to be like, oh my God, why is you wearing a short sleeve? You know, that's the whole thing. So you want to get that out. So I think a nice solid color, like you could do. A crew neck sweater, you know what I mean? Like J. Crew, like just a simple thing. You have a green background, so again, keep to your solid colors. Like your, um, you know, your gray blues would be good. Uh, stay away from bright, like stay away from oranges and the pinks and the, you know, you could do the green tones. You can even do the um, burnt orange tones in a way that it's toned down. You know what I mean? Like the the camels and the tans and things like that. Just stay away from beige. Stay away from like yellow. You know, I, I mean, there's so many things out there now because it's all about color. So I think a nice crew, you know, just circle neck, long sleeves, you know, whatever. So, and then you, depending on how many you're going to have, how many people are at your setting that you're going to take? Um, there's two hosts and then a guest. Okay. And sometimes it's just two, sometimes it's three. So if you could kind of correlate that and say, okay, I'm going to wear this color, what do you, you know, make them bring a couple different tops because you don't want to all be in the same color. Mm -hmm. Mix it up. Another thing might be a, just a nice open Oxford shirt with a sweater, like a cardigan over it. You know, I'm just simple. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, and then, you know, maybe somebody can, even if you're not, you can throw a brooch or pinches if you want to add a little bit, you know. I think they should... You should always be who you are. You know, I, I wouldn't say wear something where you're totally feeling uncomfortable and it is not you, but you could take it where it looks clean, it looks simple, it looks neat, you look professional, and you know, everyone kind of will look good on camera too. 
I think that, you know, playing with those same colors are good. Um, get a variety, you know, do your outfit and say, I'm going to wear this color, what are you going to wear? Um, even a pullover sweater is fun. Stay away from your, like, busy, busy, busy things. Like, you could do, like, an Oxford striped shirt, which would be good. You would feel comfortable. You probably would feel comfortable in a crew neck sweater. Like, that would be you. That would be awesome. You know, that would be perfect for you. So, I did that last week, except it was tan. I've broken a lot of your rules already. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and, you know, if you want to, just a simple uh, necklace. You know what I mean? Like a nice piece, like a stone or whatever, or, or engaging color. You know, it doesn't have to be real fruity or real big because that's not you, but just simplicity. Something very natural, very who you are. I think that would look nice. And then is your table, like, do you, is it brown? Yeah. Okay. Then I think you'll look really good. I think it'll overall look nice. Yeah, Cindy. She actually has a question. Oh, I'm sorry. I had a question about, um, you said to avoid shiny things. How do, how do you deal with people that have to wear glasses? Um, that's a good thing, Mark. That's a good one with glasses, huh? I well, a lot of times, you know what? People do wear the glasses on here because sometimes they have to. Um, a lot of times, though, we get away with contacts or what have you. But I, I've really never had anybody where it was really, really horrendously bad. Sometimes, lens, unless they're really shiny, it all depends on if they're going to tell you to take them off. Mm -hmm. Like if you go somewhere and it gets to be too distracting, you might have to. And another thing, depending on, if you were doing on-camera work or video or whatever, you were get whatever the situation would be, um, you're not per se looking at the camera. You know what I mean? Like if you're having a conversation with somebody, they're taping you. But is so, there a lighting way or anything that you can reduce glitter on the glasses? Or it depends. I mean, they should they you, have like a no glare coating? Yes. <laughs> yes. Very good. Why is Yes, I, I used to teach choral music, and uh, and I said, what am I going to do? I have to have eye contact with these people, right. you know? And uh, they said, well, we'll put a coating on it, and, and glass will just disappear. Oh, okay. And the coating helps, and I picked this up from another photographer, pick up some empty frames. I mean, my coating is fading right now on one side, but he had a range of glasses uh, with no glass. So it's it, like a prop. It was a prop. So right. the person still felt comfortable that they were a, an appearance that they had that was normal, mm -hmm. but there was no glass. But it's a question of light. Of course, they couldn't see when they were. Well, I was going to say, that, she would, it could be hard if you did that. If you, a lot of times I've noticed that people take off their glasses on camera or they're doing a video, they'll start squinting. Yeah, it's going to be a mess there, yeah. And that, you know, it just depends issue. on the person. The yeah. person takes the time, the light is set, there shouldn't be an issue anymore. Okay, so, um, like a special type of diffuser or something over the light it's or a backlight? More, it's, it's more the angle. angle. It's more the angle. Because like so, right now, you raise your head up, mm -hmm. you're, you're, I, I got the uh, screen in the window, I can't okay. see your eyes. Bring your head down. I'm just looking right at you. You're fine. Okay. It's having a light slightly high and above. I could, if I late raise mine up, I'm probably catching that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I come down, it's a little, it should be a I lot see. better. Much. So, better. so putting the lights up higher. Yeah. And, and so it's like a TV studio. Mm -hmm. they, you walk into Channel 11 KDK, all their lights up are up here. But the TV is more on this angle, so it naturally works out. But you, know, you get some person laughing, and they're going to light up the whole, <laughs> yeah. light up the whole screen. Another thing that I've noticed a lot on uh, YouTube videos is these idiots have a uncurtained window behind them. So you're getting yeah. glare. So all you get is this big, bright window, and then they look orange. Yeah. There's, a <laughs> there's a lot of bad videos. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of bad videos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who would you suggest we look to as like role models? Like, who's really doing? Who, who what do you watch? Who do you see on TV right now that you think would be good for us to like use as an example? Um, locally, well, it's hard. Like, we don't. Um, I 
I get because we don't have a lot of locally people too, like they're from out of town. Um, locally, what I'd like you to do is if you get channel two because she's actually one of my clients, I'm not gonna say, but it's Christine Sorensen who is on the Pittsburgh Today Live and um, she does the evening. She's a good example because they just recently, this past summer, went high death. In fact, another dear friend who was anchor in the morning, Sunny Bad is gone. She, if you follow her, she's in um, Orlando. But she was the one who was like, Suzanne, this is phenomenal, you know, because she wanted to know, she's blonde, she's fair, what am I going to wear on camera that's going to come off, you know, professional, people are going to hear me because I do the news, yet, you know, they're not going to be, oh my gosh, she's wearing that big necklace, or she's the color. She does tons of these colors, like the, you'll see the purple, the rich, the green, and everything. And they just look phenomenal on TV. They, they, you know, we listen to what she's saying, and it just comes across richer. Another good example is who's gotten better, because when she first started, it was kind of bad, is the evening CBS News with Katie Couric. I don't know if you noticed recently, but in the last, this past year, she's really changed around her image. Her hair's gotten shorter. She went through different levels with her hair. And now she's wearing a lot of these colors, which is really interesting. And they always come out just phenomenal on TV. Um, even during the day is another person who I kind of watch because she's a, a past client, is that MSNBC person, Karen Feinerman, because she's somebody that does not have a background in media. You know, she's finance and she's a corporate person. And she's been really coming around with the color. So she does a really awesome job of picking. And she's an everyday person because she's going from work right to the set and weaving again and going to work. She's all over the place. So she's been doing a good job. Um, some, some of the men. I was just going to say men. I was just going to say men. Um, locally anchoring, my favorite person dressing is um, Jeff Purcell. The person, he's always good, it's simple, it's basic. I know Bob Fabiani and he's too loud. Like some of them get too loud with their clothing. And it, his wife does always clothes, so that's probably part of it. And Lisa, his wife Lisa is really, you know, flip, flip. she's all about glitz and glamour. So he's all about glitz and glamour with his outfits. Um, he's good because it's a nice basic role model. He always looks good, he always looks professional, and he's good because he always has to, you see him standing tall. So you're going to get his full look. He's not always sitting. Um, another one I always love, Brian, um, the NBC guy. I can't think of his name. Brian Dennings? Brian, what? Brian. 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 The guy on the... Um, <laughs> the guy on the um, Channel 11. The NBC Night News. Yeah. He's all, he always looks good. Yeah, Brian, he's, Brian looks. He does a good job. Which he's very basic. You know, very low key, but you, you know, when you watch him, um, you're listening to him. You know, you're not concentrating on his outfit. Sometimes they just get a little over the top, like especially the guys on the, the Sundays, if we all watch guys that watch football shows like the Fox Sports and all those guys, they are so, it's all about clothes, it's so loud with them. But that's the way they are. You know, they're just loud people. And they're, 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 it's the whole thing. When I watch the program, I'm like, oh my God, what are you wearing now? I don't know how to answer this question, but one thing with bringing the media to the people is that you have a lot of people like myself who are not television body size, you know, plus size women and men, and women with large chests and <laughs> hips and all that stuff, which changes the whole thing because you, we, I don't look at any anchor on television and ever see myself just because that's the way the media is. And so I need to look good and pick clothes and do that, but it's, it's a whole different body type. And I know, and I'm sure men have that same experience. And maybe that's why people tend to default to t-shirts and jeans, because you just avoid that whole issue. But is there anyone that you can look to or point to that is, you know, either a larger size or plus size that's you dress as well? Um, I it's kind of funny you said that because I have a good friend who in New York City, she styles, she's we're all the plus size market because we do a lot of um, work with diabetes women in diva bags and we do all kinds of styling, that's her forte. There's a couple, I mean, there's a when you go to up there, there's so many more on television locally than there is here. Um, there's a few like Brenda Waters is not a size two, and Jennifer and Kobiak, who's a dear dear friend of mine, who's back on the news now, and I worked with her all through her TV show. 
Jennifer, you know, she was wearing a size 14, 14, 16, 18 when we were shooting. So that was a challenge for me because, again, people relate to her. They love her. She's so phenomenal, so down to earth. And she, I used to love the fact that she is in a size 2. So she's back now doing morning news on KDK. But again, she's got that show. You'll watch what she, she's a good example to watch. Because even when we did her show, she was somebody that liked trend but couldn't always wear the trend. You know, so we always wore something that we had a little bit of fun trend with, but an outfit that would become, you know, look good with her on TV. So I would do like longer, you know, just things like I would stay away from croppy things, things that would cut her off, things that would cut her here, fuller skirts. I'd always throw like a high heel shoe on her because she, you know, she had a fuller skirt with the leg showing. It, it made her elongate more on television. So she'd be a good example locally for you because she's back on TV in the news now and she's again, she's been doing the, she'll do the, the solids. She just stays away from stripes and patterns because those. Brenda wears a lot of like blazers. Mm -hmm. She'll wear a lot of rich tones. You know, she's, she loves clothes. So she's all about going with the clothes. But she's always about, if you notice, she'll have strong colors on. You know, she could carry a strong color. But she's, and it's again, the long gated things, the longer jackets. She loves things like that. But she's a good example because she likes trend too. She likes the fun things and the fun pieces. So, I mean, there's ways you can wear them. You just have to watch the style. And there's so many styles out there now. It's just amazing. I mean, they, everything's with the long gated sweaters and something like, you know, just stay away from anything that goes stripes would go this way, stripes that went down this way, those long v-neck sweaters, those cardigans that the stripes go down here, those are phenomenal, they elongate you. So you don't always, you know, t-shirts and jeans is like your safe outfit because you feel comfortable, but you just need to get someone like me to go shopping with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be fine. Email me, I'll pay you. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. That. yeah it's make you look phenomenal. Any other questions? Okay, how we're gonna say. I have a little gift for you guys. These are um, the biggest thing in TV is kind of blotter, but even in everyday life, they're little blotter tissues. So these are for when you guys do your video appearances, your podcast, your whatever it is. You'll have you'll think of me, and you'll pull out your little blotting tissue pad, and you'll say, "Oh, okay, what did I learn from Susie? What did she say? No white shirt." Shine is your enemy. Shine is your enemy. That's that's true. I take it from Archie, who's a phenomenal photographer in the back, taping for us today. Um, so the solid silk ties you see for a must be millionaire sort of. Oh, the silk ties. Yeah. Uh, when I said about ties for men, nothing shiny. Like that is a good example. That has a sheen to it. You want to stay away from the shiny, sheeny ties. Something flat. You know, like a flat mat. Um, would be perfect. You have to watch your fabric. So look at some of what this guy's for. He's got now he's on striped. And what color is his shirt? Is that white? I think it's pink. <laughs> what color is the suit? Uh, is it gray or brown? It looks like a dark navy bluish. Yeah, it's not. I I I still I'd probably take him to the blue tone to the gray tone. Can we see can we see back here as well? Sure. I just googled the only big person that I know on TV. He's on Spanish TV. And, and, and leaves is not white, but in the light, the light that she's wearing makes me completely forget him. I go right to her. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, look at what she's wearing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's already wearing anything. Sure. She's wearing You can always go into one of the media and fancy stores and have them help you find. Oh, absolutely. And don't be afraid, like, to ask. Oh, you get an idea and then you tell them, okay, well, I will think about this and mm -hmm. let you know. And you leave the stuff on their rack and you go out to Walmart or Target or something. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, for women, is a lot more makeup necessary, especially if you're pale? No. You want to, I need to touch base on makeup because I, makeup, you want to do, you obviously want to have a little bit, okay, so you want to have a foundation, okay, you want to do a lip. The biggest thing on TV or film is your lip, your foundation, your eyes, because they can get lost. You don't want to overkill with the makeup because what will happen, especially now, I don't know if you're doing love, but high definition, 
and tons of makeup looks. All you see is the makeup coming out of you. So you do want to have a nice base. You know, go outside and see what the color looks like. Your daylight is the best source of light. You know, and, and think again too. If you if you're wearing something with a V, you might take the makeup to go. If you're like I'm very freckly, so I'm gonna put and cover it here. You know, like a makeup that would take put your that. foundation on any skin that's showing. Right. Anything that's skin you show, you show a layer, whatever. Just cover it. You know, make it. It'll make it look better on film. A simple um, shadow like your your peaches, your browns, your basic colors do phenomenal for you. So and don't wear anything with a sheen to it up here. Like a frost, definitely stay away from that because that's gleaming. So matte. You know, you can easily go to like a matte counter or somewhere and get an idea of the shade. Just say you're doing a TV and you've got all these browns, tones, topes, peaches, they look great. Uh, little liner, try to do mascara on your top eyelash only. That'll make your eyes look lighter on TV, especially you have beautiful blue eyes. So I would definitely do the lashes up the top, a little liner here. Um, watch your eyebrow, you know, get it up so it's even. You could just, um, you know, tweak it a little bit, make it really even. Sometimes you can even add a little bit to make the color, but not too much dramatic. But you want to fill that in to make it look even. So because if someone's just looking at you like this, they're going to see your face, you want them to see your face. And um, a light color lip, like the peach tones are good, uh, roses, things like that. Don't do anything hard. Dark, you know, the trend now and deep lipstick, you don't want to do that on TV. And stay away from the gloss. You know, you don't want to pile on from the gloss because you'll be seeing that in my way. And guys, yeah, just, don't be afraid of, make, of, of makeup in general, but don't be afraid of powder. Or at least use those blotters. I, I those recommend really handy. I, I do makeup, and over the counter, I recommend Bare Essentials right now. Yeah. Uh, if, you're, yeah if, you can, if you're willing to go to yeah, professional to makeup, that. Um, go to the Mare Online because that's guaranteed hypoallergenic. Uh, some of the others aren't. Mare has been guaranteed. It's one of their best selling ones for years. Uh, but the Bare Essentials line. It is good. A lot of people use the Bare Essentials for power and stuff. It's like, it is good coverage. Okay, any other questions before? All right. All right. Are you guys all ready for your first appearance? You're all going to look fabulous. Yes, thank you. Email me. Um, my information is all on here. I got all your information. I thank you so much for your time today. Um, I hope I've taken some good advice with you. Thank you all again for listening to me. And email me with anything. If you have something coming up, and if you want a question, you're not sure, or you say, Sue's, I'm taking these are my clients, this is what they're wearing, email me, I'll be more than happy to get back to you. And if you're around, I live in the city, so call me, I'll take them off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Have a great rest of the day.